Mr. Tillman, you claim your biological daughter, Annetta Tillman, disappeared out of your life 30 years ago, and you haven't seen her since. Yeah. Now, paternity doubts have led to your petition for a DNA test to prove you are her father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Johnson, you are the reason for those paternity doubts. You also had a sexual relationship with Ms. Tillman's mother at the time of conception and hope today's DNA results prove you are the biological father because you raised her. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Tillman, what was the nature of your relationship with Ms. Tillman's mother? Was it committed? It started out more like friendship, more so than a committed relationship. But as time grew on and I discovered that she was dealing with other people than myself. You know, so that's when I kind of strayed away. So you discovered she was also in a relationship with Mr. Johnson? I didn't necessarily know that they were in a relationship, but I knew that she was dealing with somebody else other than myself. So, Mr. Johnson, you were also in a relationship with the same woman? Uh, yes, Your Honor. All right. When I met her, she wasn't working. And uh, I was working at a bakery, and so uh, I got her a job there. She didn't have a way to get to work. I drove her to work and then took her back home and stuff. And I, I, only, I only met Mr. Tillman briefly, one time. It was at a rooming house. I lived at the rooming house. Well, when I met her, she was, uh, she was at your house then. Well, <laughs> well okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, Mr. Johnson, you were having an intimate relationship as well, not just picking her up and dropping her off from work. Uh, yes, ma'am. All right. Did you know about Mr. Tillman? No, I only met him that one time, dropping her off home from work. Do you remember this encounter? He's seen me more than once. Because he's the one that came and told me when uh, CC was in the hospital having Netter. Remember that? So, l let me get to the pregnancy. She what was... did Ms. Tillman's mother tell you about She came the to my apartment one morning after we had been separated, I guess about maybe four, almost five months. When she showed up at my door, she was pregnant, you know. You know, I still joking with actually, you know, what happened to her. And so she told me she was pregnant, it was mine. Did she also tell you, Mr. Johnson? Uh, all she told me, uh, she was uh, uh, pregnant. And I, I said, was it from, uh, from that guy? And uh, she said, uh, uh, yeah, I believe so. And so she, she told you the baby was not yours? Yeah. And she told you it was the guy, and the guy is Mr. Tillman. Yes, ma'am. All right, yes, and so, Your Mr. Tillman, did you believe the child was yours when she told Not you? Not at first, Your Honor. I didn't believe it until I went out to the hospital and actually saw her laying up there in the hospital bed. And from that point on, I was in her life until okay. they, they sent my daughter away. They sent her away? I we guess you were CC. Y'all had to away. send her away, because... Uh, you know what? It, it's like, she has to told me that... Uh, you had uh, sex with her that morning, around about sex 12 o'clock. With Cece. And uh, that's I, Miss Tillman, yeah, mother. Yes, that's okay. her mother. And so uh, she told me she had had sex with you that around about 12 o'clock. And I had stopped by there around about uh, uh, three something, and uh, me and her had uh, had sex. I don't, so, I, I, I don't remember. You so know. wait a minute, Mr. Johnson. Let me let me make sure I understand your testimony. You're saying that Ms. Tillman's mother told you she had had a sexual encounter with Ms. Mr. Tillman earlier, earlier that day. And then you came by and then she, you also had a sexual encounter. Yeah, but so she basically did, she, she, tell, was, she, she admitted did. to you she slept with you and Mr. Tillman on, on the, the same, same day. day. And yes, that's what made you believe that... Uh, it could be my daughter. And so you submitted a calendar to the court yes. that uh, outlines this. Yeah. So around February yeah. 1983, yeah. you state that Ms. Tillman's mother told you she slept with Mr. Tillman first. Yes. And then when you came by around three, she slept with you as well. Yes. And immediately you realize, well, if that was around the time Ms. Tillman was conceived, then I could also be her biological father. Yes. Who came for the birth? I picked up uh, Ms. Ms. Tillman's mother and the baby. And the baby. You picked him up from the hospital. Yes. But you came up to the hospital, Mr. Right. Tillman. Right. After you came and told me CC was in the hospital having... I don't remember telling... I don't remember oh, telling you... you. Well, if you brought her home from the hospital, 
Who was in her life after that? Did you have a relationship with her? Yeah, because as far as I knew, he was gone. And you... so, Mr. Tillman, did you have a relationship? Did you get yes, to see I the baby? Yes, I did, Your Honor. I you did. come and get my daughter and take her with me on the weekends and... And anything hey, girl, she, when and anything you come she and get needed, her? I did. When did you come and get her? Y'all just took my daughter. When did you come and, and get her? And from? Her, uh, from CC's house. Huh? From, Sent away where? To Georgia, to her dad's house. CC came and told me. That was that was when she after she, uh, she was born. Yes. Oh, All right, she didn't gentlemen, go, she did gentlemen, not go to gentlemen, Georgia after she was born. Let's get some order. I realize that we are discussing Miss Tillman, but I think it would be better if we hear from her. Jerome, would you please escort Miss <laughs> Tillman into the courtroom, please? Hello, Ms. Tillman. Thank you for being here. Stand over at the podium. Both of these men say that there is possibility that they are your biological father. Who do you think your biological father is? Honestly, Judge, I have no idea. Um, my whole life, I've had Mr. Tillman's last name, but this is a gentleman I've never met before. You have never in your recollection, met Mr. Tillman before. Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Because he just testified in court that he came to the hospital to see you when you were a baby, used to pick you up when you were a little girl and take you with him to spend weekends because he believed he was your father. Uh, well, the only person I've ever had come pick me up and take me out on the weekends was Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson has always been there for me. Um, so I'm really confused. I don't... I mean, I don't know. And where... I mean... <laughs> Baby, after, after your mother and him sent you to Georgia, I lost but, contact with you. But you know my name? You, I, you, you know my birthday? I came back birthday? several times trying to find you. But what happened? And I don't How know. How could you not every, find every, me? I couldn't find you. Everybody mom, disappeared. And then Johnny, I mean, Mr. Johnson, it's Mr. a possibility that... Mr. Johnny and your mother was full of crap. He right? was full of crap? Yeah. Uh, you said that uh, you used to pick her up... Yes. ...when she was little and yes. pick her up from yes. where? Yes, I'm, 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 I'm the one I gave her first birthday party. You couldn't have. I'm the, you, he didn't go to, to Georgia. I don't know after where, her... don't know where no, y'all sent her. You could be your son or something. They sent me to Georgia when I was about three years old. So you Hello, did? Okay. 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 So That's now, what Mr. Tillman is testifying to is, in fact, true. You okay. were sent to Georgia to live. I, I was sent to Georgia to live. When you were growing up, you said Mr. Johnson was always there for you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Who did you think Mr. Johnson was exactly? Johnny was my mother's friend, and to me, I grew up knowing him as my godfather. Like, he's always been my father figure in my life. I've never known this man over here. Johnny has always been there for me. So they said it was your godfather? Yes, ma'am. I didn't know that him and my mom and all of them had whatever they had going on on the same time. Like, I had no idea about this. You never knew any of this? No, ma'am. I feel like I've been misled. I've been lied to. I've been cheated out of so much. And I have I'll be too, 32 baby. years old. And I have And too. I've never... All I have is a, a name on a, on a piece of paper. That's and, all I have. And, and how did you get that name? Let's talk about that. that. That's, how, how did I get my name? I signed for you at the hospital after you were born. This is my birth I have so your original get... birth certificate. And you it doesn't have... So let me you, see why, that, why Jerome. You, uh, why, Jerome, why, hand me that. Why you left? CC got mad at me because she found out I was going to New York to get married, and that's why I think you and her sent my daughter away out of my life. Now, it's not my fault. What do you mean it's not it's your not fault? It's not my you fault. You know my name, you know my birthday, you know everything. There's internet. I look for you. I searched uh, for you. I searched for you. Mr. Tillman, you handed me a piece of evidence. I want you to describe this for me. This is... Her birth, birth certificate. certificate. It is Annetta Tillman's birth certificate. Right. The one with the raised seal, higher than the birth certificate. And listed as mother, Sister Ruth Williams. Right. And then as father, it's blank. It's blank. It's big well, blank. I, I so how did you sign? From the hospital. I'm telling well, how you. How did you that. sign my birth certificate and there's no I, name on there? I, at the hospital, I get the, the nurse gave me your birth certificate. At the hospital. I was out there for you. Mr. Tillman, you said you came up there. Yeah, and you I came just to the testified a moment ago. She was born. And you just testified a and moment ago that you signed. Your name should be on it. You should, it should be I, on there. How did I, well, how did I end up with the original birth certificate? I don't know. You can go, you know. go, you can go in How did I end up with the last name of a man that I've never Mr. Met? Tillman, I want to understand this. Yes, sir. You said you remember signing it. Putting I your remember, name on it. I remember there. being at the hospital, I remember, and when I left there, I ended up with the birth certificate. Now, how I ended up with it, I can't... It's so much... So, 
No, okay. the reason I wasn't in your life, baby, because they sent you I away. Don't, I don't care about what right. they did. Well, you I, are I, a grown I, 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 man. I, I, you have your own. You should right. have did it. You shouldn't have stopped. You knew I was out there. Did you not what? know I was out there? You yes, knew I knew I was you were out there. And I tried my best to find you. Your best is... I'm not, I'm not one of those computer whizzes. I'm old school, baby. But I, I mean, gotta be computer. You don't have to be there. I don't even have an email address. It doesn't matter. Well, now I do. There's somebody. So, Mr. Tim on there. Hold on a minute. Mr. Tillman. Said, John, I don't feel like talking to you. Mr. Tillman, no, listen, hold on, listen. hold on. You ain't got to talk. All you got to do is listen. I don't want to listen to you. No, you said that gentlemen, you used to gentlemen, come to her house. Gentlemen, Ultimately, we know that this young woman grew up without, without knowing who her biological right. father is, and we're trying to get down to the bottom of this. Mr. Tillman, you brought a witness. I'd like to hear from her, please. Right. Please stand, ma'am. <laughs> State your name for the court, ma'am. Melissa. <laughs> And you are? I'm his girlfriend. You're his girlfriend? Yes. And what do you know about this, ma'am? I remember one day just sitting there. He brings out her birth certificate. Said, I ain't seen her in all these years. This man's almost come to tears because he hasn't seen her in over 30 years. They've taken her from him. What I'm saying, what, what I don't get, you saying, you saying that you, don't, you didn't know where she was. I didn't. But yet, but yet you said that... You came and you took I her came, place? But when I came back to Orlando five years later, after I came back, I came back, everybody had to move. I had no idea where anybody was at. Ultimately, I what I want to understand now, Ms. Tillman, as you stand there, what are your hopes for today? I, I want to know. I want to know where he'd been. I want to know why he wasn't there. He missed out on so much. I and know, you can man. tell me that you searched, and you can tell me that you searched, but you didn't find me. You didn't find me, so you did not search hard enough. <laughs> I want to have closure. I want to know who I am. There's so much to You're me that's child. missing. It's a whole other side of me child. missing that I don't have. You think I have a missing thing? You think I... The years that it took you growing up, you think Listen, I didn't... Listen, if you go to stuff? Google and just put in another till minute pops up, it'll even bring you to my address for years now, so I don't understand. You can't tell me. You probably have more children. You probably, I probably have brothers and Mr. sisters Tillman, where they could have looked. What, what are your hopes? Do they even I know? Mean, let, let, I, mean, these... I was just glad to find that she was still alive because I didn't know whether she was alive or she was dead. I, you know, so, and then that's look all how your she hope? feel toward me. That's all like your it was hope? my fault. So, you know so what? Mr. I was, Tillman... If I was you, John, I would just quit. I would just yeah, you stop. Don't know you know me. what I'm saying? You don't, Mr. Know. Tillman, you don't know me very well either. Mr. Tillman, nah, address... Mr. Tillman, well. just Gentlemen, address me. Listen to the judge. All right, Judge. I'm sorry, y'all. What are your hopes today? What are you... What I are you hoping... Now that I know where she's at, I always, I always want to be a part of her life. I don't intend to lose her again. But, you know, to me, it was stupid in the first place why I had lost contact with her. They knew better than that. All right. You know, they knew better. You could have... Baby, you keep faulting me. Just, you I can't even know. There's no... There's no explanation. Right, baby, there's I'm no sorry. reason. Just, there's what, nothing. What am I My mother is letting one. There's no reason ladies, why I can't fault gentlemen, you. Gentlemen, we can keep <laughs> arguing about this. Ms. Tillman, I realize how hurt you are. I, see I do. <laughs> Mr. Johnson, what are your hopes today? My hopes today <laughs> is that I am her father. Okay. Mm. I'm sorry. But I think it's so time to get the results. Are we ready? Yeah. Well, these results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Tillman versus Johnson, when it comes to 31-year-old Annetta Tillman, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Johnson, you are not her father. Oh, man. The next result, please, Jerome. As it relates to Mr. Tillman, in the case of Tillman versus Johnson, when it comes to 31-year-old Annetta Tillman, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Tillman, you are her father. I knew it. I knew it. 
I knew it. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. It's all right. Little baby, I'm sorry, but it was not my fault. No matter how much you're trying to blame me, they took you away from me. Nobody took her away from me. Yes, you did. Y'all did. Y'all just They didn't give you nobody an opportunity to contact you. They took you away, so he couldn't. They took you away. Mrs. McDaniel, you opened your case today in hopes of salvaging your marriage with the defendant. You claim you two have suffered a great loss and should be grieving, but instead, due to rumors, your husband is denying your two-year-old daughter, Ava Wells, and 18-month-old son, Daryl Wells. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Wells, you claim you have substantial evidence to prove you didn't father Ms. Wells' kids and say you cannot give 100% of yourself until you have proof you did. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Ms. McDaniel, what is your husband's denial doing to your family? It's destroying us. Like, we don't need to go through this because we just lost a son six months ago and we need to be grieving with each other. And for him to deny my kids, it's destroying us even more. We barely talk to each other. We sit in separate rooms. You know, we don't do what marriage people are supposed to do. How long have you been married? Since um, February 14, 2014. And so, just since 2014 and already the marriage, it's being torn apart? Yes. Due to this paternity question. I want to get into these rumors, but before I do, I just want to get a little background on your family. Take me back. You all met. We met. um, He was with his sister. And it was at a convention center, and he tried to get his five-year-old to give me his number, and I was like, "No, you asked a five-year-old." <laughs> it was my. He it called my me nephew. friend. He called me friend. It was my nephew. <laughs> she was. I seen that she she spoke with my sister and them, so my nephew knew her. So I asked my nephew to go. Your get nephew her. was five. Yeah, at the time he was five. <laughs> How does your nephew know a grown woman when he's five? They knew her. And so my he would sister. call me, "Hey, friend," and I'd be like, "Hey, friend," you know. Oh, the nephew would call you friend. Yes. Yeah. Because he was used to seeing you. Yes. Okay, y'all got to get this story straight because I'm like, you have five year olds. Okay, so <laughs> he knew you already, and yes, so you wanted to get to know. Yes, ma'am. Ms. McDaniel. Yes. So you sent him over. Yes. Ma'am. To say what? I sent my nephew over to ask for her phone number. Oh, f- yeah. five. Yeah. <laughs> Starting them young. Okay. So did he do it? Yes. Yes, but I told him, Your Honor, you need to get my number. So we talked on the phone for hours and hours. You know, to me, it was love at first sight. It was. But it was. I talked on the phone hours. We meet up with each other. You know, and from there we've been together since since then. It, this has been since 2010, 2011. All right, Mr. Wells. So tell me, why do you believe you are not the father? Well, Your Honor, I heard rumors that she was cheating on me. Now I'm grieving too. You know, it's, we both, you know, we both lost the son. But the, it's just the rumors and everything that I can't deal with it no more. How long have you been hearing rumors? I've heard them since the first one was born, the one we lost. So since you all basically got together and started having children, you've heard rumors that your wife is with someone else. Yes, that my kids belong to somebody else. And who told you that? My ex. So, Mr. Wells, you are in a relationship, a long-standing relationship. You get married, you begin to have children, and all of a sudden your ex comes to you and says, I've got news. Yes, that they... Tell me what she told you. She was like that, uh, Megan is the thought of the... of the, the place where they work at. But this is your wife she's talking about. Yes, yes. So she just decides she's gonna call you out the blue and tell you your wife is a thought. I mean, <laughs> well, not out the blue, but she heard that she was pregnant. So she was like, I just wanna let you know that might not be your baby. Oh, so she was warning you. Yeah. And so when she told you this, did you have reason to believe or to suspect? At first, I didn't. No. At I, first. Nah, cause I mean, she's she's a good woman, you know. She only time I don't see it was when she would be at work, you know. So I don't know what she's doing there, but at and home. And so, okay, well then let me ask you this: If you've got a good woman that you don't have any questions about, you trust her. She only goes to work. She comes back home. She's a good wife. She's you know gonna be the mother of your children. How is it that some ex can come in and tell you something about your wife? Well, it wasn't... I mean, after that, then it's... She, uh, she's being sneaky on the phone. Ms. McDaniel starts acting sneaky? Yeah, she's covering up her text messages, erasing them. Oh, I, I delete my text messages. It's been a habit since I was little. I delete my texts every day at midnight, and I can admit to that. Now, I'm a straight shooter in this courtroom, Ms. McDaniel. That really doesn't sound too... 
good. <laughs> you delete your text messages every night. Yes. Now, clearly, you know, text messages are not what's getting her pregnant. But at the same time, <laughs> you usually smell a little smoke mm -hmm. before we get to the fire. Right. Do you believe that your wife has been unfaithful to you? Yeah, yes. You do. And that's why you question paternity. But he might be thinking of, of a, this time we went to a club, and this is another reason he probably, you know, don't think it's his kids, because I was in a club with my friend, and I was dancing on my friend, but the guy spanked me. And so, Mr. Wells, you saw this happen? Yes. What happened? But the guy, as he starts dancing and twerking, he stuck his whole hand up her dress, and he was smacking her butt. So you're oh. dancing with a friend and yes. some other guy out that of the blue speaking to. puts his hand up your dress and that smacks you. That she was talking to. That, oh, this is who your friend was yes, with? Yes, Your Honor. Oh. Doesn't make it any better, Jerome. No, it doesn't. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. So, Mr. Wells, you see this happening. Yes, ma'am. And so in your mind, at that point, that's before you even get married. Yeah. But the bottom line is you filed it away in your mental Rolodex. Mm -hmm. How does this fuel your doubt about Ava? The rumors, and then they, she doesn't look like me. You know, all of my kids, they all favor me in some way. You know? He has told my daughter, I'm not your daddy, go find your daddy. What? I did not say that. I Mr. Wells. That. I did not say that. What did you say? I probably told him, like, I ain't your daddy. Like, you know, meaning today. What, what, just a joke, though. I just playing with her. No, that's not a joke. Because you if you were playing, you wouldn't be in this courtroom. And so for two years, you've looked at this child with doubt in your mind and in your heart. Yes. I have, Your Honor. And I can see that really does bother you deep down inside. <sighs> We've already got a heap of doubt around Ava. I want to move on to your doubt around Daryl now. For one... I have this, Your Honor. Jerome, will you hand me that, please? Sure. And what is this, Mr. Wells? That is the uh, birth certificate. As you can clearly see, I, I'm labeled as Ava's father. I'm not on the birth certificate of him. But, but you Your two Honor, were married was... at the time. Yes, and he was yes. there for the delivery. He was the only one in the delivery room. Since you're married and the child's born within the marriage, he is the legal father under the law. But why leave his name off of this birth certificate? I don't know, Your Honor. I mean, I can't sign it. So you all don't remember the execution of this birth certificate? You don't remember this happening after the baby? I, I swore he signed it, but obviously he didn't. That's the proof. So, Mr. Wells, you feel like there's some part of this that was intentional on your wife's part. Yes. You believe that somehow she maneuvered or said, I don't want him to sign that because she was unsure? Maybe, yes, ma'am. That's my thoughts, yes, ma'am. And then it's his skin tone. He, he got ginger hair. And he, he's too light. He is too light. <laughs> well, I mean, now, I his do... mother is white now. I mean, but, but he's... Honor, he calls him white boy. That's him, not no. acceptable. He calls him what? White boy. And that's not acceptable. I call him my little white boy. <laughs> he has curly hair. He's Mr. just... Mr. Wells, you're gonna have to get some better child dialogue. Yes. Okay? Because yes. what you're saying to these children... <laughs> no, 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 no. You refer to the baby as my little white boy? He's too light for one. You know, the ginger hair, and then, like, the way his head is shaped. I bought an exhibit... If the I what of his head? The, the way his head is shaped. The yeah. shape of his head? Yeah. And you brought an exhibit? Yes, ma'am. Uh, please step over to your exhibit and uh, show the court what you brought. Okay. <laughs> and what I'm showing, Your Honor, is just the way of my... the way my head is built with, like, a roller coaster. You know, it has a, a lump in the middle. You know, most of my kids, they have that. All of them. As you can see, mine is the same way. As for little Durl, his head is more flat, and his, his hair is ginger, like reddish hair. You feel me? I don't... I've never had that in my family. So None you have a roller coaster head. Yes. That's what you call it. Yes. Because there's a dip in yeah. it. Yeah. And the child's head is flat. Yes. Ms. McDaniel, do you have a roller coaster head? No. No, Your Honor. <laughs> I don't so, think so. You have decided that this physical attribute, you say, that your other children possess. Yes, ma'am. But how many other children do you have? I have, between them two, it's five more. Five additional? Yes. <laughs> and they all have a roller coaster head? Yes. 
but these two children don't have it. Yeah. And that leads you to doubt. Yes, ma'am. At the end of the day, all of this doubt is truly tearing your family apart. You have this beautiful connection, this beautiful relationship, and now you are barely talking, sleeping in different bedrooms. Yes, Your Honor. You're not even at a place where you can grieve the loss of your child together. That's a lot. And that's hurtful. That was my firstborn right there, and he was the world to me. So for him to deny my other ones tears me apart. And so when you're dealing with this grief and you're by yourself... Yeah, he's all I got. My family don't grieve with me or nothing. So, I mean, I have nobody but him and my kids. You are dealing with this by yourself. Yes, Your Honor. Each and every day. Yes, and no parent should have to go through it. Absolutely no. not. I mean, for you to be in a position where you've lost a child and have no one to lean on, both of you really, yeah. that is difficult. And then to have the doubt seeping through all of this, there is a lot at stake. So at the end of the day, these results truly mean everything. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Wells, I can see that this makes you very emotional. Yes, it does. What are you feeling in this moment? Uh, it's unexplainable. I, mean, I feel lost, especially without that little boy. And I wish that these kids be mine. You know, I want nothing more than that. Even though I do say my little joke names to them. Believe me, I love them. Well, I'm hard on you because children are precious beings. Yes, I know. And the words we speak to them have power. And you may not think that they feel them, but it may be the intonation and the intention behind them. Even if they don't understand the words, yeah. they may feel something. And I can see that you are a loving person. I can see that from you standing here. Yeah. And I just want to make sure that in your own grief and in your own doubt, you don't damage children who potentially could be yours. And that's why I'm hard on you. <laughs> now, have you prepared yourself if these results don't come out favorably? I know it's going to be hard. I haven't prepared myself for anything. I just pray for the best. I, that's all I can do. If one of the children or both of the children are not your biological children, would you still continue and try to make this marriage work? I don't know, Your Honor. I don't know. Hearing your husband say that, Ms. McDaniel. It, it hurts. I mean, because my kids really love him. So, I mean, I would have to deal with it, but I, I can't change the way he feels. But it would hurt and it would really tear my kids apart. Well... I think the only way we are going to start to get down to the bottom of this is to get the results. Jerome. There you go, Your Honor. Thank you. You're welcome. We have two results today, and these results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of McDaniel versus Wells, when it comes to two-year-old Ava Wells, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Wells, you are the father. <laughs> you look relieved. I am. I am. Very relieved. Very relieved. Good. In the case of McDaniel versus Wells, when it comes to 18-month-old Daryl Wells, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Wells, you are the father. <laughs> Sorry, baby. Now that we have this result, tell them how it makes you feel. I love you and I want our, our marriage to improve, but we need to grieve over our son and be there for each other. And I hope you start believing things I say, not your ex or any family members. Yes, 
I do, baby. <laughs>